Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the episode of the... I'm going to say that again, because what the fuck? Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Good start, good start. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 77 of the episode of Motor Racing Podcast. I hope you've had a nice week, as always. Uh, episode 77, we'll pass it to Lauren. 77, riders of 77, please. Dominic Agator. Yes, that's the main one. Don't ask no. me anyone else. God. <laughs> 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 well, you got the main one this time. Did, so that's let, me, on let me think about this, though. Did Dennis Foggia run 77? Nope. Or, oh, right. Okay. I knew it was a seven, and that's why he's seven yeah, now. I thought it was 77. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Gotcha. Then gotcha. I don't know anyone else. I don't think anyway. Well, I've got four main other ones. I've got a few as well. So, Jacob? Well, the first one, Javier Del Amor. Remember him? I have no idea who that is. <laughs> Remember the guy who <laughs> wild carded at for Evintia at Catalonia 2015. He started Friday From watching as a fans. fan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then got a call on the Saturday, qualified and got a point. Yeah, that was mental. Yeah, yeah, he finished way. a lap behind, but he got a point after starting literally on a Friday. He literally had, he went there on the Saturday. He appeared in his leathers and helmet that he rode there with, like on the road. Mental. And he was 37 wow. at the time. Yeah. Right. Are the thirty seven the seventy seven? Uh, <laughs> this 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 really lesser known German superbike rider uh, called Michael Schumacher. Oh yeah, an IDM, of course. Yeah. yeah. In 08 on a Fireblade. Mm. Uh, got... Yeah, he had a big ass crash there, didn't he? Kind of gave up after that. <laughs> yeah, sensible boy, I think. Mm. Like, yeah, he, I don't blame him. You know, he he couldn't do both like Rossi. <laughs> okay, then, another one. James Ellison. Yeah, MotoGP. Yeah, and Kyle Ride. Nice. Kyle Ride's the only one I've got that you don't. So no, that you did as well. So I got some others. Uh, Rafio Fursco yeah, in the Fusco. Um, Junior GP World Championship. Um, European Moto Two rider Matteo Volpi as well. Um, Andreas Perez, God rest his soul. Yep. Um, I'm just leaving him for you. Yeah, Taylor McKenzie as well. Mm. Oh, I did know that, yeah. Yes, of course. Mm. Yeah. Um, Vicente Perez did run 77 in Moto3 as well, instead of his normal 63 in a respect to Andreas Perez as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. Yeah, that's about it. It's probably more, head. but... I'll check quick. A couple of obscure oh. Moto America riders or something. There's Filippo Faroli as well. I don't know. I think it's... You know, I know he runs... 77 in rookies, isn't it? In the rookies, yeah, yeah. Filippo Ferrelli as well, mm, yeah. But seven in Chev. Yeah, because um, whatever his name is, first go runs it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's some 77s. If you've got any more, let us know. Um, I know that some of you have messaged in to say that you were screaming at everybody about not having uh, Loris Baz last week. I'm embarrassed. So, uh, <laughs> I am embarrassed. Uh, Don't I worry. <laughs> yeah, as you should be, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, we've had um, a decent day of racing. We've had, we expected to have at least one champion crown this weekend, and we've had zero. Mm. We've had the Moto Two title flip upside down, and Fabio Cotteraro has somehow held on by the skin of his teeth. Incredible to take it to the final round as well, which is yeah, fair play to Fabio. Um, mm. I think I want to start out with. Franco Morbidelli, who <laughs> finally uh, worked out how to ride this Yamaha this weekend and uh, picked up three penalties in the process <laughs> <laughs> to destroy any result he would have had. Well, I don't know about worked out because he clearly can't go around a corner without smashing into somebody or blocking them. Yeah, mm. I, uh, he's mental. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking this weekend. Um, mm. At as, all. As he finally I, lost his head. I, d- I don't know if the last speak one... With it. I don't know if the last one warranted a penalty though. It was it was rough. I'll give it that. Um, yeah. I, I haven't seen if Elijah's commented on it or not. He did well. I I think, I think it was did. on the like just over the line of acceptable. Honestly, it was it was a you know it, he used him as a boom. He wouldn't have made the corner without Elijah. I think that's why. Yeah, I mean, it's like with uh, Jake Dixon and Augusto Fernandez. That was risky as well, but no penalty for that one. Exactly. But Dixon would have made the corner. I think that was the difference. It was rough and possibly over the line, but, but I don't think Dixon used him as a break. 
Yeah. They did eventually. touch a lot, though, Dixon and Fernandez. Mm. So when I seen the Morbidelli and Alicia one, I was like, oh, well, it's just the same thing. But no, I, I, yeah. I, would, I would separate them personally because I think Dixon would have made the corner with or without Fernandez. Morbidelli would not have made it without mm. Alicia. Yeah, I, I think what was more wild, though, was the penalty that he got for it was the same penalty that Alex Marquez got for taking Jack Miller off. It's weird, because then, yeah, Takanakagami absolutely annihilate everybody at Catalonia, yeah. no penalty. And then Alex Marquez does that and gets, um, what was it, three-second minute penalty or a ride-through? No, a, ra- a long lap, something like that. Yeah. And then Franco Mombardelli gets a long lap, but then obviously just has it added to the end of his race, a three-second time penalty. Mm, but it's just a bit yeah. like huh? <laughs> I think Taka was let off because it was a T1 incident and obviously the pack benches yeah like with like with the Moto 2 crash today which saw Acosta and Chancho go down I think again because it's T1 and it is kind of a case of it's it's unlucky um, mm. but but no penalty warranted because it's just T1 I don't shenanigans think, yeah I, I think with that crash in Moto 2 I actually don't think either Pedro or Chantra had much to do with it. There were so many people around them that also were involved with it, in it that didn't crash, that caused the two of them to crash, which is why yeah. definitely there shouldn't have been, or there yeah, wasn't any reaction, penalty. Isn't it? Yeah. It's unfortunate, yeah. but, you know, it, it's, you're trying to fit 30 bikes into one turn, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's that one. simple. Yeah. I'm surprised we didn't see more of it, to be honest. Yeah. Like, mm. it is quite rare to see a first corner smash up, even in like circuits where it is common, like Austria, for example. You know, mm. and there's always meant to be crap there, and it's it's not. And Valencia turn two, we normally see chaos. So that'll be interesting in two weeks' time. Yeah, I think um, the thing is, like, I think riders now know take it so easy. Like, you, you, basically, if you go slightly over the limit of T1, you're probably on the floor or hitting someone on the floor, and then that's compromise the race regardless. Yeah. So I think it, it yeah. just makes more sense to lose some at the start to gain a lot at the end. Mm, yeah, that's it. Um, it's, I guess it's, it's one of those things, really. It's, it's just racing, really. Um, yeah, like I you're all think... fighting for the same like two centimeters of tarmac. It, it's going to come together at some point. It's just how yeah. it is. These penalties are strange because. Uh, Franco Morbidelli's move was a bit, ooh. but you know everyone they go, oh, you know, Robin's racing and all that, and then yeah, but using some of those people rub, racing. people rub, and then people complain, and it's like it's like in BSB at the moment where it's constant, people are getting penalised like week in week out for stuff, and you're like, mm. can you race? Can you not? And then when you do race, and you you know you are Robin, like if we had this kind of you know, where it's so strict, these kind of standards back in the early 2010s, you know, I'm talking like 2000 to 2010 with Rossi and Biaggi and all these riders. Mm. Like, I don't think any of them would have got away with the stuff they did. And it's it seems oh, yeah. to be over time, it's gotten more strict. Rossi at her rest 2005 would be a double long lap now. Easy. Oh yeah. Rossi would have been, Rossi would have lost that. Full. Rossi never yeah, would have won championships if penalties had been a massive thing back in the day. Like, yeah, and, no way. and like one of the best moves of all time in 2008, uh, Laguna Seca, that would have been um, on no, a track limit. Track limits. You, track limits <laughs> Same yeah. as Marquez, back to him. Yeah. It would have yeah, been two exactly. of the most iconic passes are now considered Ever. illegal. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's weird and strange. I think, you know, people, we say literally every week about racing being a bit more boring and things like that. And it's like, I think one of the reasons why it's kind of not as good is because riders are too scared to overtake because they know they're probably going to get slapped with a penalty for it. Yeah. I think I think they are gone slightly overboard in terms of safety because of the riders dying. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, and they want to kind of stamp these things out. Yeah, but they, there's, it's a fine line and it, it is difficult to find in, in defence of race yeah. direction. Yeah, and it's consistency. I think they maybe need to lay out a bit more what warrants a penalty and what doesn't whereas something like the incident today warrants a penalty but it could happen in two weeks time and not be a penalty it needs to be more set in stone I think and then it would be a lot clearer for for viewers and for riders knowing what they can and can't do I think it's hard to set a precedent though because no two hits are the same really exactly yeah it's very difficult to do it's not like F1 where you know you can rub the same part of the car pretty much nine times out of ten it's just yeah, it's, it's tough. Yeah, it is it is tough. And it's a tricky one. Like 
we kind of we like to see this aggressiveness. It's why Top Rack gets so much publicity in World Superbikes because he is overly aggressive and he's not scared to kind of make these moves. But he's clean. And, but he. But yeah, that's the the other side is he's clean. But the only way you're gonna get clean is by making these moves and kind of learning from it as well. Mm. But and if you stagger and compromise your next race, then. You've yeah, them, much it, it's it's such a fine line. It's mm. such a fine line. It's so difficult Light to manage. Such work a fine out. line. Yeah, it is. You are literally just dancing on the limits of everything from what's over the line, what's under the line. Should you make this overtake? Should you not? Is this too aggressive? Is it not? And then race direction have a hell of a job to do. Uh, it is chaotic, but I wouldn't. I do want think they should race direction. Not not the minute. No, I it's wouldn't. Carnage. I do think that they should be. Is the weird thing with race direction is they're so on it with some things and then just completely bypass other things, like when Navarro was late at the side of a track last weekend. That's a strange one, that was. And, you know, and he taught, he's messed up his femoral artery and could have bled out the side of a track. And there were bikes whizzing past still. And it's like, why are you so on it with a rider who's gone half an inch over the freaking corner onto the green, but a rider sat on the side of the track facing mortal danger if another rider crashes? I couldn't give any less of a shit about. Mm, I, th- I think, again, like to try and defend race direction a little bit, it was an unusual spot. I think it was quite unlikely someone was going to hear hit, like, again, where Navarro was. But nonetheless, it should be zero risk and a red flag. Not just, yeah. uh, not just yeah. unlikely, it should be impossible. Yeah, there shouldn't, there shouldn't really be any leeway for it. It should be just... No, not at all. As like, soon like, as yeah. yeah, I get why they didn't red flag it, but they should yeah. have red flagged it. Yeah, I mean, as soon Surprise. as they realised when the riders were even just coming round to the end of the lap and he hadn't been cleared and he'd taken his helmets off, that's when you go red flag because you know fine rightly by the time they come round again, it's it's not being cleared. He's not moved out of the way. As soon as you realise that this is going to take a bit of time, it should be an automatic red flag. Yeah, Superbikes did it in, in Supersport, didn't they, with Barish Sahin when he absolutely went to the boon in FP. Yeah. And if bike was on the track, he was on the track and straight away he waved the red flag. Yeah. And it was probably yeah. no danger, really. But but then Superbikes, when Leonardo Mercado was sat at the side of a track for three laps, yeah. didn't red flag the that race. That was, like, was, was what I was about to say. It's like, <laughs> you know, they, they made it really good impression on one side. And then they just completely undo all their good work the next with, by not doing it. It's mm. this, was, uh, this was at the same circuit that they red flagged as soon as there was geese on the track, you know. Mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like within seconds. Yeah. And it was like, oh, what's going on here? At least a minute of like, oh, why is this red flag out here? Oh, there's geese on the track. And then two days later, three laps after a rider's crashed. Oh, we're just, don't worry yeah, about it's it. fine. I'm, really it's because Pet, Petter was on their ass. That's what it is. It's inconsistency. You know, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, it is massive inconsistency. Which brings me to my kind of question about if they don't want to do a red flag because of the hassle and, you know, restarting the race and all that, can they not at least implement a safety car like British Superbikes does? Is that is that something that you... No. ...that could be implemented? And that, Let me tell you why I think that wouldn't work. It's one thing to do a safety car in cars because you can heat up the tires like that. Do it on a bike. If you've got a slightly cold tire, especially on a MotoGP bike, you're not last at a corner. It's yeah. That simple. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's going to be 10 times more chaos. Like, yeah, like you, bringing remember the race Le Mans back. Moto 3 when oil was down? Yeah. And everybody just stacked it on the one corner at the bottom? Well, that's what yeah. it would be like on the restart, in my opinion, because it, you'd have to travel at such a rate of knots to keep heat in the tire that it It'd would like be pointless having a safety car. Yeah. Like Portugal this year. It would. I mean, I don't know, Portugal, because they're all wet. It was, you know, wet track. But the effect um, would be the same. It'd be, it would like be the train, on a wet track. It, it would be the chain reaction of it would only take one person. The pack's all tight, close together because you've all bunched up again. One person, yeah. carnage. That's all it would take is just a, a moment from one person. You know, they've all spread out red flag to bunch them all and, up together again. But for a pro of that, you, you know um, F1 has the virtual safety car? Yeah. yeah. I see absolutely no reason why they couldn't do a sector virtual safety car. Yeah, um, or even yeah, but, even just a virtual safety car. 
it's again i, I think mean, you'd lose too much pace with the virtual safety car because it's, it's, yeah. it's the tires just cool off so quickly you have to put so much heat into them that it's just yeah but my it. point is it does work in British Superbikes. You're, you're saying that it won't happen full stop. It won't work because, you know, mm. you'll lose the thing. But it, it works in British Superbikes. But it works in see... British Superbikes because they are a modified production chassis which heats up the tyres and they're on, per, obviously, Superbike tyres. Mm. It wouldn't work in MotoGP because everything's so stiff, so hard, and takes a while to heat. Yeah. I, I can appreciate that. But, like, when it does, for example, I'll go back to BSB again, you don't see them when they have the, the safety car out. You don't see them all stacking at the next corner. And yeah, maybe it won't work in MotoGP, for example, um, because of the, you know, the kind of Michelins and the Dunlops in Moto2 and 3 having such a small kind of working mm. area and when they lose heat, it, it is difficult. But we're talking about the best riders in the world here. You know, if, if their tyres do lose a bit of heat from a safety car for, say, two laps, it's not going to be... They're not all going to end up crashing because of it, I don't think, purely because... You know, they kind of know what they're doing. I'm, um, I'm not sure. But, like, literally, like, look at the tracks that have predominantly one side. They've had to bring in asymmetric tyres just because you lose a slight amount of heat and the risk of crashing is gone. Imagine a safety car for lap two laps, let alone a sector. Mm. It just, it yeah. Would, like, the, the, the asymmetric tyres are the giveaway that it wouldn't work. Yeah, it's... it's uh... Yeah, I mean, I get that. Um, and I get it that in cars it does work better for that reason. I just, <laughs> I'm just wondering like how they could... I think I've noticed recently <laughs> in the last few rounds when yellow flags are shown, no one cares. You know, in qualifying fast laps, people still try if they're the fast laps, the lap will get taken away from them, whatever. But they're, they're still pushing 100% when the yellow flag is shown. I think mm-hmm. maybe working on... Keep slowing, slowing riders down, you know, like in Formula One where there is a virtual safety car, you can only go so fast or however much yeah. on the limit. Like, Maybe implementing in my, that. Yeah, well, like in my opinion, there's no reason whatsoever that they couldn't implement a GPS into the bike CCU and then split it into four sectors and basically virtual safety car that sector. Like obviously it flash up on your dash, like, the straight before or a couple of corners before virtual yeah. safety car in three to whatever. So you end, you know, gonna be full gas and then go over the bars or something. But other than that, yeah. I see no reason they can do that with a GPS. We go with technology. Why not? Yeah. Like something like a VSC, like mm-hmm. a virtual safety car. Yeah. Could just work. just I to mean, slow everybody it, down. Yeah. Like, like Navarro. Slow them down enough. Yeah. Slow you down I mean, on the street just before Honda Corner at Philip Island, for example. And yeah, then like because I mean we don't need like like, yeah, like I said, there was a safety car, but even something like a virtual safety car would work well for like a sector or two mm. where you can't, you know, you have to go slower. Because like you said, they don't respect these yellow flags anymore. No. And <clears throat> yeah, no, like yeah. it's worth taking the risk because it keeps your tire heat, especially in qualifying. And you yeah, need, like another argument for the tires not being safety car right because you've got to, if they end 100%, you can't even set a fast lap, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, right, we'll move on um, to, I guess, the main thing today of MotoGP um, going down to Valencia for the final round of the season. Mm. Pekka Bainaya was able to win the race today, yeah. but Fabio Cotteraro finished on the podium, which denied the championship for Bainaya today. Bezzecchi looked looked good. Bezzecchi was closing on Fabio, but I think he may have himself cooked his tyres a little bit too much trying to keep up or chase Fabio, mm. which does, it does mean, unfortunately, that Alessio Spargo is now out of title contention, which was I, I was going to say, anyway. like, yeah, I'm going to say it is a shame that Alessio is out of the season, out of the championship contention. It was also expected, but he never really should have been there in the first place anyway if you look at Aprilia before 2022 yeah. and if you look at how they've come on in this year to come this close now is now battling for third in the championship Bastianini's only a point back Bastianini realistically could take the third from the championship for Alessia but for a top four for the championship for Alessia Spargo would be unbelievable like 
Imagine Even that saying is that in 2019. an incredible story in itself. Yeah, in 2019, you look back and you're like, and they shown no, that and you know, you know, they they are they would have the odd six year in there, but yeah. on the whole, they were the worst team by like even worse than KDM would just come in. And then exactly, and do you know what my theory of this is? I think as good as Aleish is and with the experience he has, I think Aprilia at the flyaways was the problem because they'd never had a good bike. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they, they said they, like they, you know, they they can't. They've never had front running pace at Motegi. Never had front running pace at Phillip Island. Okay, they tested at Sepang, but they've never raced at the front in Sepang. You know, it's it's a weird yeah. One. I mean, I'll watch a video for him at later uh, at the zone, um, and he basically said that Fabio and I'll find the quote real quick. But he basically said that Fabio and and Naira have been the better riders of the two this in the flyaways. One of the three, sorry. Um, here we go. Let's see if I can find it. Just think, if oh, Alicia had not go, celebrated yeah, yeah. a lap earlier at Catalonia, you would still be in the mix, but only just. Yeah. I mean, so he's basically said that he fought harder this year than he ever has in his entire career. Um, and that it's an amazing how far they have come and what he's done. He can't understand how well they've done. Um, basically said that, obviously, Fabio and what's the name, Peko, have been the better riders on the flyaways because their bikes have basically just worked better. Because Aleish has struggled in these flyaways. Like, his bike has been... It's just no data. Nowhere, really. Like, <laughs> all the experience in the world, data is still more important, especially in this technological age. You know, yeah, you might have like, been able to do it in the 500s, but now, no chance. Yeah, like, in the European races, if you look at, like, the four, four races before... um. He got like a ninth, he got a sixth, sixth, third at Aragon. And then the flyaways, he got like a zero. Because obviously his bike... Yeah, that was not his itself. fault. That was not his fault, yeah. And then like a tenth at Thailand, a ninth in Austria, Australia, sorry. And then at Malaysia today, I'm guessing like a tenth or eleven. I'm just going from points and trying to work but out. But then at the, at the other side so. of the coin, he won Indonesia. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's true. It's weird. No, he didn't no. win. Him, no, no, Arge- sorry, Arge- Arge- Argentina. Argentina. Sorry, no, Argentina. Yeah, you know, another a different flyaway. Dip- with different continent. Yeah. Very different Which we conditions. also hadn't been to in three years. They had no front running data there, and he won it. This, so it is it's baffling. It's, it, I think. I think it is just genuinely the rate of acceleration, like of development. It's yeah. It's because the Catty have obviously massively increased and impressed over the year. Because they have eight bikes on the grid, but and then Yamaha have improved as well. But because they probably only have two bikes on the grid, they haven't been able to kind of have that same rate of development. Having four bikes on the grid next year with all of Era Fernandez on them will will aid them with more data and things like that, and then will aid them to kind of push further on in the year. But yeah, they not- haven't been able to kind of arrive at the front. What you've got to think, though, is every single thing, pretty much Ducati tests, then ends up on the bike. Yamaha have yeah. put different things on the bikes from tests. You see nothing that Aprilia tests actually go on the bike. No. It's, 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 pr- it's pretty much the same bike that started Qatar, and, and I think that yeah. was their downfall in the end. Yeah, it could have been, yeah. Because it's not like Salvador is doing a bad job. He's definitely doing a great job, which is why they've obviously... Yeah, they just say nothing's worked. You know, that little wing, like, and then Ducati yeah, come out with that a variance there, it's gone. And, and the Ducati same source works. It. Yeah. No, I, I, it's, a, it's baffling, man. It's just like, they're clearly trying the right things in the wrong way. Yeah. And it's not like it's just an LH problem because Vinales was 16th today, mm. which is incredible given how well he was doing earlier this year. Mm. Um, my, yeah, it, my, my only thought is that if this race had happened at the start of the season, it would have been a very different story because everybody was starting with their development. But, yeah. You know, well, you can't afford to stand still in mode GP. I've said it so many times. No, I think that's why having four bikes for the next year will lay them a and lot. If, if, um, it won't matter if they got four bikes if they are testing the wrong things and things then ended up on the bikes. I think... Yeah, but... I think it definitely is more of the fact that I, I do agree they've tested far too many things this year that, that clearly haven't been working. But I, I fully agree that it's just they've never been up here before. They've never been front runners. I 
I would say that that's more what has hindered them in the last mm. since yeah, the summer they've break. They've never really. actually been up there in MotoGP. Yeah. Like they've won lower classes left and right, and you know they've won World Superbike. But every single attempt at MotoGP, they've never been front runners. They have no experience at it. And I it's think, not like, not I think they're going to fight God saying, "Oh, there we are, twenty fifteen, we will here." Yeah, they weren't. I think we thought it would be a good story. We talked about it last week. Like everyone would have loved Alicia to have come in. You know, he's been here eighteen years, and he's finally, finally found this pace. Like I think everyone was just, myself included, thinking that this would be this amazing story that they've managed to turn it around. And I think realistically, it probably was never on. I'd like to say that if they had continued their rate of development from twenty twenty to now into this season. It would be, I think yeah. They, yeah. They would be world champions. Yeah. But unfortunately, as you get to the front, the margin gains are just so much smaller that, you know, you could, being static is basically going backwards. Yeah. Because if you don't improve, yeah. someone else will. Well, everybody else is making incremental improvements every single week. Like, look at the Even things you don't see. Yeah, it's like things you don't see and... You know, maybe fairing adjustments or adjustments with, like, I don't know, maybe... Base sevens alone. Is it, is it, like, for example, Olin's could bring to cut a new set of forks that just work a little bit better than mm. than previous, or the exhaust has been updated a little bit to find, squeeze a bit of power, or the chassis switched a little bit, you know, and... I think it is literally just a base setting thing, because I probably have no race-winning base setting for any of these tracks until this year. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's something that I think next year we will see them we'll see them do the same thing next year. But I think now when it hits that halfway point, we they'll they'll continue this trajectory. They're not gonna just falter because they've now they've got the experience of being here now instead of but they not doing do it. And not they've have got the experience of developing something and in throughout the season because they've not done it. So that I yeah, but I that, can't see them being any better off because they don't know what to do. No, but I think they know yeah, but, now that yeah, now they, they know yeah. they need to make these changes. They need to be making the steps up throughout the season, not just at the start of the season. I think they will have learned from this a lot. Alicia seemed to, I think, realize that after the race and in his interviews, yeah, like they will learn, but they still have no experience of implementing better bikes throughout the season because they've not managed it yet. Yeah, but that's why I'm mean? saying next year they will yeah, be better. But that's because... what I'm saying, like because. <laughs> They've not done it. They've not put anything on the bike that has yeah. made the bike better this year. How are they going to know what to do next year? Because they've not got it right or wrong. They've just not done it. Yeah. 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 But that's why where Raul Fernandez and Miguel Oliveira come in as well, because they can bring a different perspective. Because obviously, Vinales came from Yamaha, which was a inline four. So Vinales, what he is helped Aprilia do is become maybe a bit more rider friendly to the Yamaha for example which is why Vinales has come good and why Alicia Spargo has found it more rideable so then for Miguel Oliveira and Ralph Fernandez to come in Miguel Oliveira has lots of experience in a V4 on the KTM KTM is one of the more powerful engines on the grid um, so he can the help the most powerful it. by all accounts yeah, like more powerful so he, than the Ducati. Yeah, exactly. So he can help them with the, you know, the development of the engine, for example. And where Olvera can provide a different perspective is because he has ridden the steel frame in KTM for years now as well. So he's going to uh, like a different yeah. type of aluminium. But like, yeah, that's I don't know what the they thing are. I was about to say is, is that going to be a hindrance? I He's think never it will, ridden an aluminium frame in MotoGP. I think it will hinder him in terms of develop in terms of learning the bike, but I think he will then be able to use his knowledge of going, okay, this feels better this felt better on the KTM than the Aprilia, and he can then use that to then go, okay, try this, try doing this, and then that will help them in the development. So I think it's what gonna be hard each to rider can bring can push them up, but and then having Ralph Fernandez as young, because he's only had one year in MotoGP, he he kind of has a bit of a blank canvas. They've made the smartest so, sign-ins, in my opinion, apart from the one thing which I wanted to mention, you touched on it with the engines. 
they've lost their engine developer, Aprilia, to Yamaha. Luca oh, Marmarini. The, the person? Yeah. The Luca Marmarini was former Ferrari F1. He's oh, yes. made the 90 degree V4. He's going to a Yamaha for 2023. I forgot and about that. That worries me. Because they, you know, they lost an integral part of what made their bike so good. This is just a problem. I yeah. don't know. Mm. It scares me, to be honest, because if he can look where he's done with that Aprilia, if he can do that with the Yam, and clearly, you know, an inline four doesn't lack power like a Suzuki. If you do it right, yeah. could be a yeah, problem. that's right. Yeah. Um, so I've just seen there's been a massive crash in Formula One. Ooh, um, hey. Yeah, with Alonso and Lando. Stroll. Alonso smashed into a wall. Um, yes, not good. Um, hopefully everyone's all right in that one. Um, but yeah, onto the actual title itself. Banaya hasn't won the title yet. He has been confirmed as basically it being the most the biggest comeback in racing motorsport history. That includes Formula One. Mm-hmm. That is 91 point deficit up to zero. The We spoke about it last week and in MotoGP, the biggest deficit previously was Johan Mir recovering 45 or 46, 46 points, points to Fabio Cotteraro <laughs> in the 2020 season. Fabio Cotteraro again, isn't it? Bloody hell. Mm. Uh, <laughs> That's a record you don't want, but you also kind of yeah. do want because it shows you were fighting for the title. It's a it's yeah. match 22. It is, but the fact that Ben Naya has done this and now he leads by 23 points going into the final seat, final race of the season, but Fabio is still fighting. Fabio is still pushing to try. And he got his first podium today since Austria, yeah. which is That's insane. That's not title form, is it? With two broken fingers. Or a broken finger. Um, he got some flipping everybody finger. off. Yeah, this one. Yeah, <laughs> he was doing that in part it. Five, it was like, yeah. <laughs> it's not me, it's broke. Yeah, yeah it's broken. Uh, uh, Daring at Paco, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, screw you. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, but I'm I think I'm it's done because I can't see Fabio. Winning. It has to be done. I, I fully yeah. agree. The with only that. way, yeah, the only way is. Like, Fabio has to win the race to be in any sort of... like well, Fabio, He has to. Like, there, there's no other yeah, option. He, he has, has to, to win and Peko needs to crash, realistically. Yeah. It, yeah. That, like, it's, and that's the problem. Is I, I can maybe see a Peko crash, although right now, with the confidence that he's in, you know, he, he, he dueled with Bastianini and came out on top yeah. going for a title. Yeah. I thought today... I thought today pressure. I yeah. thought he turned the pressure, the the pressure day. to his positive... Yeah. I thought he was going to crash. Today. I thought Ineo yeah. put enough on him that he was crash. one but he, wobble he did T9 where he nearly went to the back of Bastianini. I thought that was game over. But yeah. like, I regardless of like, that, I, I, can, I can maybe see a peck of wobble, but it's much less likely at the minute because he basically knows it's done. But regardless of that, I can't see Fabio winning. You know, like yeah. weirdly, the Ducatis work around Valencia, as we saw last year, where the one, two, three. But in saying that, Fabio also, a Yamaha doesn't really work around Sepang. And I'm quite... Yamaha uh, Yamaha doesn't work many tracks and Fabio is doing what Mark Marquez does so well yeah. and is there riding around their issues. Well, that's what I mentioned before the flyaways, didn't I? That I thought Sepang would be Yamaha's worst. And it went it the other best, way. best, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, it's crazy. The pressure was like, off him, though. For once, mm. this entire season, he's been leading it from almost the start. So it was nice to see the pressure off of him and see what he can actually do I think he knows himself that it's probably done yeah so he's yeah, no he he's like nothing it was finished. yeah he's no weight in his shoulders whatsoever so you never know he's going in with like oh well it could happen in Valencia you know it could all change and Pekka could crash or something could happen but it's probably not going to happen so that's it it's done he's probably already looking yeah, at next just, year like it's, it's, it is it's all but done it is front, yeah. one hand and four fingers on the title like, we we'll definitely yeah. put like, the scud on it now, good, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's, there's a very good chance that Peko could even crash and remount the 14th. You know what I mean? It's... Well, 
I've, yeah, we've seen crazier things happen in fairness. Like, especially with the way some others riders are struggling. Like, you know, he could remount and beat the Tech 3s. He could remount and beat the RNFs. He could remount I mean, and beat Paul. Well, he could crash out and Fabio just not be high enough. Yeah. Well, yeah, he could, he could, he could not even start the race and Fabio could finish second and yeah. still be tired. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm, but, still but my jumping. point is that Peko is so far ahead of some of the satellite bikes and some of the lower riders at the moment that a oh, he could. may not could. even matter. I've seen it in Mizano. Um, mm. Jack Miller crashed, Bezeki crashed. They all remounted and got back up there. I don't know if they scored points, mm. but they were considerably faster than the, the people at the back of the grid. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, if he, if he says, like, for example, if he goes down turn two, lap one, there's no reason he couldn't pick the bike back up and he got an entire race to get back into the points. And yeah. could happen. Like, I think everything's against Fabio. But, yeah, the odds are fully but as against I've, him. As I've said, this, uh, like, I've, I've been speaking to someone on the page and um, he keeps saying about Alicia Sparger, you know who it is, Tech. And, um, oh, God. Yeah, like, <laughs> he but, listens to this podcast, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he does. Um, you know, like we have quite good discussions, debates, etc. Um, but he, he like he kept saying to me, Oh, you know, there's no chance of a relationship. I was like, the thing is, you can never say there's no chance of anything about the GP. Literally it, anything right? can happen. So Ricard Jove, obviously a, a very big journalist, earlier, <laughs> before the race had finished in Moto Two, made a tweet that yes. said Let's find it. Let's find it. Because this was, oh, no. I was like, this is Did he put his foot in it? Gold. So he, um, where, is it? hold on, I'm just scrolling down my feed. There you go. So he was like, oh, I feel bad for um, Augusto because Ogura is um, earning his way to the championship um, because Ogura was in second place. Um, I and, think, I do believe And then Ogura crashed out with him. Like I, I think he what he was doing was praising Agura for the manner he was trying to win the title in. No, so he was basically saying he feels sorry for Augusto because he wasn't in basically mm. looking to win the championship. Um, and he was like, but um, Agura is earning his way to this championship. Yeah. And then within a minute or two of that tweet being posted, Agura crashes out of second place. Yes, and pretty much hands the title. Oh, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, no, I wouldn't I say don't, that. Yeah, 9.5 okay. points is not into money. He hands a an extreme advantage. For example, the only real way Agura could win the race, but if Fernandez is on the podium, he's still champion. Yeah, but, you know. But he might not he be. He wasn't on the podium today. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, like, like, obviously, yeah, anything can happen, but to go to have a 13 because Agura would have had a 13.5 advantage mm. so then go to a 9.5 disadvantage could have, is monumental it could have been 18.5 as well if he'd could actually made a calculated move on Tony Arbolino and not just absolutely sent it yeah. and been I, like I, I, yeah. I don't care I think Joey's tweet was more I think if it had been like an English native speaker it would have said like, like something along the lines of I feel sorry for Fernandez because Agura is going all out for the win to try and win this title. I think yeah. that was what he meant as opposed to earning his way by... I think he was more impressed with the manner Agura was trying it, like shit or bust. No, it was more about going to the fact that um, Agura is like building his way to title by getting these top results, whereas obviously mm. Fernandez was quite down. Quite rightly as well, him. to be honest. Like, I, I, I love Agura's approach. And if it mm. paid off, we would be talking about him as an absolute hero for going for it. Yeah. It didn't. yeah. <laughs> well, now he's getting the other end of the stick is the problem. Everyone's being like, what the and hell was he I thinking? I did check it on my story earlier, but last year on his first year in Moto2, Agura missed Valencia. He's never mm. actually ridden there on a Moto2 bike. So that could be a disadvantage from the off. But at the same time, he, you know, he rode Spanish Championship, he rode in Moto3. He knows the place. It does so just make you wonder. It makes you wonder, though, what was going through his mind today. Knowing fine rightly, you could have come out with a thirteen point five point lead to decide I, I on the last it. corner. I want to overtake or the last few corners that he wanted to go for the win. Like I thought, I, it was I just a bit. It. I thought it was a bit greedy. But again, if it had paid off, would have been unbelievable. I, but I'm not sure should about, he have taken the risk? I don't think. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's it. Didn't it? Like I'm not sure about greedy. Greedy for the I win. Think, 
of yeah, the like, race. What I, what I mean is, like, I don't think he was out of pocket making the move. It was there to be made. He just didn't make it correctly. Like, it wasn't a lunge. Yeah. It wasn't a, a stupid call or anything. It was there to be, you know, the door was open. If he'd held on for, I can't remember, what corner was it even at? Uh, T9. Right, bottom, so we had time. But, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's like, more what I'm thinking. Have, he could have held was on. fast on the straights. I think that was the problem. He needed to make the move because he I wasn't think, catching yeah. it in the straight. I think if he'd held on. And a, and and a final corner move at Sepang on that off camber left. Would have been that's incredible. A, that's a bloody difficult thing to do. I can see why he made it. I, I think it was the right call. He just didn't execute it. I think Agora, like... It was a bit silly of him, I think. Like, if it had taken second place, he would be looking good yep. into the championship this weekend. But I do fully, uh, completely respect the mm. fact that he has gone to try and win the race. Yeah. You know, he's trying to win the title by winning races, not by just taking second, taking third, which is the smart and calculated thing to do, of course, because then you take the points and then you win the championship. But... I think there's a bit more honour in winning a title knowing that you've winning races to do so I, rather than I, just coming home in 10th. Like, yes, of course, coming home in 10th and taking the points is the smart thing. But if you want to be a champion, champion mentality is you win. I think his team need to take a, a slice of the blame as well because they were constantly updating him of Fernandez's position. I think mm. if they had said, you know, like if they just left him alone or you know, occasionally updated him that Fernandez was in sixth, I don't think yeah. Agura would have gone quite so hard. KTM were doing similar though, showing Augusto Tony Arbolino's lap times. Yeah, Augusto being like, you need to hurry up here. Like, yeah, like that, I think that was more smart because I think they were almost pressuring Agura in to try and to win the race. Like they, Agura, they were almost uh, taking the decision out of his hands. Agura always wants to go for the race win, though. Like you see mm. it anytime he's in Park Ferme and he hasn't won, he's in second or third. He looks so upset. He's like raging. He's an didn't exciting win the race. rider. It's, it's that simple. Like, and exciting riders can make mistakes. It's just, it's how it is. But like to, to say, like the people who are saying or criticizing him for making the move, how can you criticize someone going for a world championship for trying to make a move into the lead? You just can't. Like. Yeah. Like, you gotta try you gotta try yeah. at the end of the day and I respect him for and of um, course don't forget Tagura has another year at this. Yeah. And Fernandez doesn't. Augusto doesn't yeah. win this title. He doesn't get another shot unless he moves back. Whereas Agura can pick up the pieces of a lost title knowing, oh, I've got another year and with next. more experience. He will learn. He will learn a lot from this, whether he wins it or he doesn't win it. Like whatever mm. the outcome. Like based on this year now, he has to be favourite for next year. One of them, yeah. Oh yeah. One of, but I think the one of like for... 10 at this rate. One of, <laughs> yeah, he's, consi- like, he's the only truly consistent rider this year. Uh, I don't I, know. Augusto Fernandez has been a lot more consistent than Agura this year. But you don't know who's um, going to Agura's be consistent. Been consistently top five, top six. Whereas Fernandez so is many... sort of. Ooh. Well, like, if, if there's any rider who will be champion next year, it's Alonso. Alonso, Lopez. yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Definitely. He is now. He's now rookie of the year, despite missing the first six races and DNF and out of his first. Yeah, like, Ag- like Lopez is doing what Agura's done. He's if he can't win, he's thereabouts. And I think he's truly the only rider this year from start to finish, from from the Qatar opener to now. He's the only rider who's been consistently thereabouts. Agura, he's only mm. missing. Well, yeah, like anyway. Fernandez had Fernandez has a bl- had a blip until he got his first win, obviously in yeah. uh, Le Mans, because you know can it look good? And then he kind of faltered. Arbolino was like freaking way up. Vietti finds that he prefers to eat the gravel than actually finish the summer race. break. I think so. he absolutely hates the summer break. I don't know what he did, but he come back and it was like a totally and he's different rider. Like, well, he has right in the last seven races, he's DNF out five of them. So no, he's DNF out of five out of seven, and then he's got he scored three points in Thailand and he scored six points in Aragon, which is like what eleventh and thirteenth place. Yeah, pre summer break, Vietti would have won that title by the time we got to Phillip Island. Yeah, but, you it's, know, it's if Granny had Grandpa. Yeah, next year is going to be madness. Um, 
Right, we'll do these. I'll bring out the predictions as well. Um, and then we'll go from Meta 3 to GP. Um, I will say already, we, we, we did shit. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, I think it's more difficult now to predict because we were in a title fight as well. I, I know for a fact I predicted the Moto 2 podium last week. <laughs> a week too early. I, I always do. I'm always a week too early. No one I think I was. I think oh my God, I got the yeah. wrong order, but it was. Yeah, you had Abelino, right Dixon, and Lopez. Yeah, it was the right three, but just in the wrong order. Yeah. Oh my God. But I predicted God. the Arbelino oh win. I cannot believe I predicted the Arbelino win. Just I predicted an Arbelino oh, win like man. two or three races ago myself as well. You know, it's just. But then, you know, you'll predict him to win next week, and then he'll and then he'll come like fifteenth. I was gung ho after predicting Alex Rins on the podium in Australia. Yeah, that that I thought I was. Too, I tell you something. It. Like obviously we it won't be this week, but for next week, predicting Valencia is gonna be tough. Could be anyone. It literally oh, is the can... one track where it could literally be anyone. Sorry, right, I can take zero points and still win the um championship, so it's fine. Good <laughs> like Isa Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> so um right. Moto three. So Cameron, if you can just put the the thing here, hold on. I'll do I'll do a clap. So the way the points are scored is, you get a point if you predict pole position. You get a point if you predict a rider on the podium in any position. For example, if you predict Onshu to be third, if it is second, you get a point. You get five points if you correctly predict pole position in all three classes. You get five points if you correctly predict a rider on a podium. For example, if you pick Onshu to finish third, if it is third, you get five points. If you correctly predict the winner, you get 10 points. If you correctly predict all three riders on the podium, but they're in the incorrect positions, you get 15 points. You get 20 points if you incorrectly predict the riders on the podium, like you would for 15 points, but get pole. If you correctly predict the riders on the podium in their correct positions, you get 25 points. If you correctly predict all three podium riders on the podium in their correct positions and get pole, you get 30 and if you can do that for all three classes, we'll give you 100 points. Yeah, so in Moto3, it was, what the fuck, there you go, John McPhee who won the race. Yeah, if you, if you call that, <laughs> right, I don't care who you are. If you call that, you're a fucking liar. There you go, every week he says, <laughs> take like a it, shot if you've got that. It is Ooh. absolutely zero. I don't think anyone would have predicted that, like not even McPhee. Genuinely, no. especially started 22nd. No well, chance. Well, he had a shit weekend. He All nearly weekend. went home. Yeah, he, he ate it. Yeah, he nearly went home after Saturday. Um, he just gave it up and didn't yeah. do Valencia. Like, yeah. And so and the won. fact that he and he bloody pinged four of them in the same, in one corner. Yeah, like, I, holy I, I shit, think, dude. I think they're... I, I don't want to sound horrible, but I think their complete disregard for the, his chances of winning the race is what cost them. Because I don't think they saw him as a threat because. Yeah. Why would you? He's not won since 2020. He's not been up there. I wouldn't have considered him a threat. You know what I mean? I think they were more yeah, concerned about the riders around them who were... They're, they're more concerned about Foggia and yeah. uh, Sasaki, really. And then they all mess themselves up and McPhee comes in with the experience and there you are. But it's not even that. It's the fact that he overtook before the first of the two long straights and managed to lead all the way down the first straight and then lead all the way down the second straight as well. I'm like, mm. Everybody lost oh, momentum messing each other up where he took the lead. If, yeah. if, if, if just one of them had been sensible, McPhee would not have won that race. This but is that's free, not, People yeah, aren't sensible. That's it. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is it's, I think one, two times a year in Moto3, experience beats youthful stupidity. And oh, yeah, I think that's this why Minyo won in Qatar, isn't it? Yeah, and this is one of them. <laughs> yeah. So McPhee won the race. Um, Sasaki second, Garcia third, and Foggia got pole. So for pole position, I went for Gravara. Cameron went on shoe. Lauren went Garcia, and Jacob went Asman. I honestly point. thought that would work out just because he's been riding there in the Malaysian stock. Well, he won the um, Stock 600 Championship. Yeah, like it literally is like three rounds all at Sepang, isn't it? You know, he, he's done the mileage here, but yeah, instead he, he was like, what, 19th? So didn't work yeah, out. but that might be because he's racing for a D team. Yeah, um, I, I, an F team at this point, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael. Um, the the so, single worst team in the paddock at this point. Yeah, fucking. 
shit, man. Um, what do you expect? It's British, man. It's always going to be vision shit. Vision track <laughs> Honda for anyone who didn't realise Mazman had a wild Brit- card with him. British engineering, mate. We're all shit. Um, <laughs> don't buy British unless it's Murder 2, Triumph and Genzek. They're pretty good. So, and Murder 3. And they Yep. So, third place went to Garcia. I went for Poggia. Jacob went for Marrera, nearly. Uh, Cam went for Sasaki, so we get a point, and Laura went for Holgado. Second place, I went for Sasaki. Jacob went for Sasaki, so we get five points each. Ooh. Cam went for Onshu, and Laura went for Garcia, who was third, so she gets a point. For the win, myself, Cameron, and Laura went for Guevara, who is a very lucky boy. After yeah. nearly getting get on to that a sent into a wall. Yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. And then uh, Jacob went for Messiah. Um, zero points so the I tally predicted third, fourth and fifth instead <laughs> so the, t- the tally um, going into the weekend was myself leading with 314 Cameron with 252 Ryan with 179 who I didn't get any predictions from Jacob uh, 174 and Laura with 68 in the back um, so after that I scored 5 points Jacob scored 5 Cameron 1 and Lauren 1 tally's now 319 for myself Cameron with 253, Ryan Jacob tied on 179, and Lauren with 69. 69. Nice. 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 We'll just end so, it there. Just, yeah, that's the highlight. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, Guevara is one lucky boy. Yeah, Why? I wanted Hi. to start on that because uh, that could have been ugly, like real ugly. Oh yeah, he could have smashed himself straight and head onto a wall. Yeah, like the the fact that I don't know what happened. Like Sasaki must have missed a gear. Something. Yeah, I don't really know fully what happened to be honest. Mm. But there's quite there's a few incidents like Nepa, Stefano Nepa with his crash and broke his leg, and he was so lucky not to get hit by Yamanaka. Like yeah, Yamanaka. Oh my applause, word! Like straight up round of applause. Like the reaction to a cat. Like. Incredible. From yeah. everyone though that came yeah. behind, like especially yeah, especially. especially yes, but then everyone else, I think. Everyone else. Whoa. Yeah, because like you had Foggia, you had Yamanaka, I'm watching it now. Kelso, um mm. yeah, now Yamanaka just stands out as being unbelievable. unfortunate for Nepa that he's got a broken leg. He's broke his but considering, tip of you know, he could have come out of it being smashed in the head, I think he'll consider himself a lucky boy. Very lucky. Well, well, and, and like especially with what we've seen this year multiple occasions like in various classes, I think coming out with a broken leg is a positive. I uh, think it's the best, yeah. best in a bad situation, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, Scott yeah, Ogden was... also ended up going to the medical centre. He's okay. He's fractured. Yeah, I mean, he's fractured Nepa's... something. Yeah, I think he has, but Nepa wasn't good because as you can see from the photo I just sent, his foot was bent the wrong way. I don't mm-hmm. want to look at that. I'm refusing. It's, it's, Let it's... me just... Uh... <laughs> it looks worse than it is though because it's, it's literally just a tip fib fracture. It's not even a clean break. I don't like yeah, when they a... show breaks though because they showed Fabio breaking his finger too and just watching yeah. it like go the wrong way. Yeah. I don't need uh. to see that. Yeah, like, yeah. It, like it looks a lot worse than it is, I think, that one. Like, I know, man. You know, I, I mean, be... your leg's bent the wrong way. <laughs> but I don't think it's, it's remained bad. that way broken, if that makes sense. I think that's just yeah. when he's down. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, but, it's, um, it's literally only a fracture. No, it was, def- it was definitely bent the wrong way though when he... Um, on the stretcher, like, but um, yeah. So Nepa, I said the crash. Munoz took himself out of the race on the high side again. Was lucky not to uh, same, get hit by same anybody. Corner. Same corner, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no grip, but there. yeah, there wasn't any grip anywhere. Manu Gonzalez says the track was shite for grip. Well, it looked it so, like all around. It looked it like the, yeah. the the rain really played havoc. Washed all the lines yeah. off. Mm. There was a lot of crashes, to be fair. Like obviously, Ogden, Nepa, Munoz, Suzuki, Sura, Tatai, Rossi, and Frasato as well. Mm, Rossi, I thought, was helped by Marrera, but I think he, he wasn't. Yeah, there, there was no contact. contact but oh, was there not? not no contact oh, okay. whatsoever. He just went down to his own thing. I think he was just on the dirty part of the track and the front went. He was having a great race, too. He was down he in, was. what, like 22nd, all the way up to 5th. Mm. What parts do... 658 have on that Honda because it's, yeah. it, it was actually it like the second with best the, Honda. Yeah, it was like it was mm. competing with the layer part, which you never see. 
He's been no, good he in these last, though. what, four or five races. He's really been... Is he staying with them? I yeah. think so, yeah. He's not been confirmed, Like It's he? not been confirmed, but... Because there's a rumour that the team are going to leave the paddock, but I don't think that's going to happen now. Um, yeah, Tom Riders have been confirmed, now. though. Is um, Obviously, Colin Vaya has been confirmed now at Husqvarna Intact GP Moto3 mm-hmm. next year, alongside Yuma Sasaki, which will be great. And obviously... That doesn't mean Husvana also will ride a Moto 2 with Intact GP next year with Darren Binder and Lucas Tolovic. Um, which is a triple cash, you already know. So, yeah, so that was that's really good. But in Moto 3 as well, um, yeah, I, it was a pretty good race, man. Um, Yamanaka is looking, to be fair, Yamanaka is looking really good. And I think for next year, I'm really hoping he could really make that gas gas work because. Yeah, he's, he's basically he's done there what Nepa's done. This year. Like, he's steadily improved, like Nepa. And yeah. now Nepa's yeah. starting to compete in the front. Like, unfortunately, that's not going to be seen at Valencia now. But, no. you know, Nepa's weirdly becoming like a a, a, a strong sixth place man. Which, considering yeah, what he's done previous years, I see no reason to think he couldn't continue that. And the Amanaka yeah. could easily do the same at Asma. Yeah, he looked it looked really, really solid, genuinely. Um, and he's staying with the same team, Nepa. Yeah, he is, yeah, with the MTA squad. Um, but yeah, it was a really solid Moto3 race. I still cannot believe John McPhee <laughs> won the race. I don't know... I don't I don't know if he's got a ride for next year still, has he? He's definitely no. not going to be in Moto2. No, no. He's, um, he, the rumour was... He was at Portimao for, to try and get a World Super Sports seat. Yeah, like the Michael rumor was MP, is... wasn't it? Michael Laverty's his manager, manager and on BT yeah. Sport he was saying I know obviously he can't just come out and be like oh yeah I'm looking at this 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 and this yeah, but they, yeah, yeah. they didn't sound very um, hopeful Is he not rumoured for Triumph alongside Manzi? Might be mm. but that depends on yeah because uh, what's his face Simon Sumer. Buckmaster did mention that he was looking at him but depends because that's more of a money team that one you know yeah. you can have to, he's got he, money he's though safe, that's the but... thing like McPhee does bring a lot of cash just like if we're being totally honest it's the reason he stayed in the paddock for so long because you know four well, wins in two will help yeah, as well but four wins in 200 races unless you bring in money that does not keep you a seat for 11 years yeah I don't know um, but yeah it was great to see obviously McPhee in the top spot um, for his mm. second to last race in mm. number three like it's a great send off isn't it you know he didn't fully deserved as well he, he, he didn't put a foot wrong all race yeah. Yeah. Did well. He did well. Um, right. We'll move to Moto 2 now. Um, but the championship in Moto 3, obviously, it's already been won. So it doesn't really matter too much. But there is a battle for second place still. Um, Aspar trying to get that P1 and P2. It was Eisen Guevara, who obviously is P1. Mm. Sergio Garcia, second place. Eight points separating him and Foggia in third. Sasaki, fourth. Who, mm. who can still tie second place in the championship, Sasaki? And he will get second if he if he does do it on virtue of most wins. Yeah, well, Sasaki can get second in the championship. He's only 14 behind Garcia mm. and six behind Foggia. So that's something to think about. Dennis, Fod- no, Dennis Onshu is in fifth, still has finished every single race this year. Yeah, Very solid. Poorly this week, but... Yeah, Jamie Messiah sixth, Suzuki seventh, Marrera eighth, Top rookie. Murray in eighth is actually insane as well. <laughs> really good. On, on, a, um, on a rookie team as well, worth pointing out. Yeah. Um, Diogo Marrera in eighth, like I said. Minion ninth. And John McPhee has catapulted himself up the championship standings from like 15th up to 10th, tying with Holgado now mm. for 97 points. So. Mm. But, you know, it's. It's, it's not what he expected, is it? Unfortunately. He like, did have a broken back. I think we all have to remember. Yeah, he did break yeah. his back. And, <laughs> and, a, and a crew chief who is basically disregarding Trapped. his entire yeah. opinion, like the entire year. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's not going to help wrong you. And, yeah, it's and then all of a sudden, he's, uh, <laughs> he's no longer with him. And then what happens? <laughs> Yeah, he was, he was there race, he but, was there yeah. and I was like surely that's not him I actually texted you yeah. to be like is this yeah. him yeah. I couldn't believe that he's still there you, well they were all celebration and hugs I was like mm, not nice <laughs> yeah because yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, I'm never going to see you again you prick <laughs> <laughs> fuck you this is dumb yeah yeah so move to mode two um, 
prediction side of things. It was Arbolino that took victory. He's um, a bit disappointed with Arbolino. He's not as um, mental during his uh, part of uh, May interviews anymore, which is mm. a bit sad because normally we're used to him screaming and going, very happy and all that, but we don't good get that feelings. He was still, yeah, good feelings. He was still... I think, do you know what I think it is? I think he's, he's becoming, happy. I think he's becoming accustomed to winning. He's becoming more mature as well, I he's think. He's hanging out with Fabian. Matured. Yeah, he's, he knows. But like, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's becoming less special because it's expected now. He said, well, he said it in his interview himself. He was like, I want to show how good of a racer I am by winning races. It, you know, I think he's realised that. He's made a connection in his head now of what he needs to do. I think next season yeah. could be very exciting for him. He's yeah, the new ones have linked in his head. Like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's got like, a two-year contract. Yeah. Mm, no, it's just continuation might well pay dividends and if he ends on a high which he has mm. you know which no matter how already, Valencia yeah. goes I, he still needs to work on his consistency but yeah uh, you know, the, yeah but that the, comes he's only his second year well that's what I was about to say is you can't teach speed but you can teach consistency yeah it's, and it's he, had, he has a, speed when he's consistent that's the thing yeah oh, you, like, you can't speed. make a slow rider fast but you can make a fast rider stay on I think yeah. that's the difference um, Second place went to Alonso Lopez, who is the GOAT, um, best rider ever. Um, love that guy. Dixon in third. Um, obviously, customary Dicks out for Dixon. Um, did really well. It's his sixth third place. Sixth, oh, fuck me. Sixth, yeah, sixth <laughs> third. I just said six out 12 times. <laughs> sixth okay, third place of the season. Whee. Good job, Dick. Well done, bud. Thanks for that. I'm definitely not. Hanging at my ass right now. <laughs> um, definitely what you, didn't what you wake can't up see only five hours ago. Is uh, deck is looking at us right now, and his tongue is literally in a knot. <laughs> yeah, he's just like had that. a stroke halfway through. <laughs> yep. Um, so, and it was a girl on pole as well. So I went for pole position for Um Don't know what the fuck was going through my head. <laughs> Jacob went for a Renas, hmm. Cameron Chantra, and Laura Lopez. Which, yeah, that's a fair point. Um, third place me and Jacob went for a Gura almost it, we had that <laughs> well we had a point from it until the last lap yeah um, Cameron Chantro got knocked off T2 Lauren went a Gura no you didn't you went Acosta who also got knocked off T2 that's sick useless yeah and then he crashed out later on which is a shame because he was lapping as fast as the race leaders as well which is a big shame he would have been a but, problem for Fernandez based on the times yeah. that, with about three to go yeah, he would have been. He wouldn't have um, passed him, in my opinion. But as if Dixon wasn't a big enough problem for Augusto Fernandez. <laughs> Imagine Pedro mixed in there. I, I tell you oh, something. Though, I um, I was a little bit disappointed with Fernandez because at going the cool down lap, Dixon, you know, he went round. He said, you know, it's racing. Like he offered his hand, say, no, good race, and he just didn't want to know. He, he spoke like, to yeah, him no, about he did, four he times. Shake he did yeah, shake he it eventually. Didn't look at him. Didn't look at him. Yeah, kept his head turned. Contact. I'm not saying it's, uh, I, I, you know, you I kind of get it if you're going for a world championship. If you're fighting for a world championship and you've got some fucking dude smashed into you, I kind of get it. But it's not yeah, like he ruined his race and Jake yeah. owes Augusto Fernandez nothing. It's not like he's just going to yeah. hold the door open and go, ah, oh, yeah, where you go, you've got a championship to win. Oh, yeah, 100%. They are like, racing. Like, like, we all know how I feel about Dixon, but... He had every right to race for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But even if he was on the girl... same squad, he's still racing for himself. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, you know, You've he, seen Pedro he had every do right it. to go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for Augusto, it was just a case of maybe heat of the moment and the fact that he's batting for a championship. And yeah, but you know, show a bit of class line. and just, even if it's just, you know, a, a knock up, a, a nod, something. A fake. A fake smile yeah. and just Even, go, yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, on to the next one. Yeah. 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 It was, Maybe it was, he can be the dark, the dark guy that finally we get. <laughs> yeah, so it was a, a little bit, bit of disappointed in that, I must mm-hmm. say. Because yeah. Fernandez, you you know, he's normally a very class act, isn't he? So, yeah. Pressure. So sec- second place, I went for uh, Fernandez, speak of the devil. Um Jacob and Cameron went for Lopez. So hey. you each get five points. Laura went for Dixon, so you get a point. Um. Yeah, you went in with Dixon. You need to go third, or right? you can't go any higher. I than said third. this. I said this. I said I think this is the week that he's finally gonna. He's had yeah. enough third places now. It's gonna be the week where he progresses. I was wrong. Nah. Okay. Nah. I need to learn yeah. from my mistakes. It's okay. Yeah, we do. Like uh, Fernandez not shaking Dixon's hand. <laughs> um. 
and for the win, I went for Lopez. He got second, so we'll take that. One point for me. Jacob went for Chantra, who got knocked off. Cameron went for Agura, who was uh, should have had it in the race. <laughs> yeah, and Lauren went for Lopez as well, so you get a point as well. Like, I I would have so, been very very intrigued to see just where Chantra could have gotten to. It was yeah, very Chantry sure. conditions, wasn't it? Well, I think Pedro yeah, well, as well. Yeah. I think having yeah, the both of them would have together. changed a lot in that race. Yeah, like it right. might even... Hold on, can I do the points? Time no, I nobody know. cares. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cameron and Jacob, five points each. Myself, one. Lauren, two. So, I now have 320. Cameron, 258. Jacob, 184. Ryan, 179. Lauren was 71. Can I just say, of a possible 30 points there, the top people scored five. Was that worth stopping for? Yes. Yeah, but I, it's what you have to do anyway. It was crap. I always do it. It was crap. Well, well I that. need to give out the bloody total points before we carry we on. We should just make thing. people who listen do their own maths instead of spoon feeding them. Well, yeah, it's pretty obvious. Maybe. Dex out in the lead. <laughs> then it's Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's obvious order. We it's all know. It's the battle for the podium. That's it. Everybody's yeah, interested in. Yeah, but I in. still have to, have to give out the bloody point score from each bloody class before we <laughs> carry on. Me and Ryan this are involved routine. in three battles. This is routine. We've been doing this all fucking year. Come on, guys. But yeah, uh, better two. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Acosta, no. Acosta was um, looking good for the race win, yeah? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. we, like we can't say for sure, can we? But I would have. Mm, I think can. they would have added another dimension, Chandra and Acosta. If Top six. Not, yeah, they they would have added another dimension into the title fight with Fernandez, Dixon, Gonzalez. It would have been a, you know, an extra layer. Because yeah, they, they clearly what, though, would have had the pace, or at mm. least Pedro would have, based on what he was doing before he decided to do a Fiatti down the road. Yeah, tell you what though, Manzo, Manuel Gonzalez looks bloody good, doesn't he? I was really surprised of all the front runners. His tire was the one to go because he was on yeah, the hard. Yeah, had hard. Yeah, but you no, know, it happens. It's experience. He's still, he's still a rookie at the end of the day. He's still a rookie. Yeah. That's his. I think that's his either third or fourth, fifth place this year. Mm, Yamaha are gonna be uh, licking their lips and thinking, "Oh, we, we actually." Found someone, Christ. He's going to be um, <laughs> replacing Fra- Frank and Morbidelli next year. <laughs> well, no, not yet. Year after next, sorry. Yeah, he's still going to be signing. That, yeah. He's going to absolutely boom Nozani next year. Yeah, he's going to do. And then if, this, if a seat comes up, because Yamaha probably going to come back to the satellite squad in 2024. Yeah, he, you know, it, I would not be surprised to see him and Firmin in on that, on that bike. Depends on how Furman does because it might probably be Lopez if anybody out of those mm. beat up boys. Apparently, how Lopez Furman's already soon. signed a MotoGP contract though. And yeah, I but... do think it's Yamaha. I don't if know, he's I got don't... a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Because I thought it was Suzuki but obviously it would. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so what the fuck is that noise? There you <laughs> Sorry, there's a weird noise. <laughs> But yeah, so Moto Two was it was pretty good. Um, I am sad about Ogura crashing out. Like you said, um, he's obviously it's not over until the Fat Lady sings, of course. But is it looking like Fernandez is probably going to be the champion? Yeah, it's hard to beat a Spaniard in Spain, isn't it? Mm. So I thought Ogura right up until this race. I, I still, Agura. I still would not be surprised. To see a guru win in Valencia, and, um, and you know, there's a there's a fair chance. Let's be real, that Fernandez 50, 50. could finish fifth or yeah, sixth. Yeah, nine point five points is not a lot when you're trying to it's win a not. title. No, it's not a yeah. Peco twenty three gap, is it? No, twenty three is like insane. You know, it, um, like there, there's a very very good chance that Fernandez could come fifth, sixth, seventh with the talent in that field. Yeah, because Fernandez still needs to finish like. We're saying, oh yeah, he's still got a 10 point lead, but he still needs to win or stay very close to Agora to still win that championship. If Agora beats him, Fernandez has to be within like two or three places of yeah. us, provided in like the top. And Agora top eight, could for example. easily win, but that this on the same flip line, so could Fernandez. They're both very capable of winning the race. I hope that they both of them have a scrap for the uh, victory. It's just a shame yeah. that because of that half point that's in there, for example, if yeah, they Say Agura wins the race and Fernandez finished third. 
Fernandes will win the championship by half a point. Yeah, they can't tie. Like it's <laughs> Let's impossible do that. To tie now. That sounds great. <laughs> I vote for like, that like, option, please. Because yeah, what yeah, I yeah. think is, look at the talent in that field now. And Fernandes clearly is feeling some pressure. The writers, oh, the writers yeah, got nothing to lose well, at Valencia. Cool. And then don't let's add into the fact that MV can suddenly perform at Valencia. Yeah, Corthy and Paul was yeah. looking to race, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, the, like a Spanish championship rider on an MV at Valencia well, that works, that could be a problem. Like Borja Gomez, for example, yeah. who did really well. Like, yeah, he said he'd never raced them at two before. Like, he'd done one private test for on one last year, you know, to then come in on the ponds at a track he's never seen before on a mm. bike he's very unfamiliar with. So, then do what he did, super mm. impressive. Yeah, and the MV replacement rider name escapes me now. Um, David, bit. no, yeah, Sanchez, David Sanchez, David Sanchez. Yeah. like he did, he did crash T one, but yeah, like he, you know, he's been racing that he, bike in the Chev this year, and so. he qualified quite well. You know, mixed conditions, like on a on a world championship debut, that ain't half bad. And Casma Daniel did well, yeah. Um, and Azroy, the other wild card on the classic Petronas colors, yeah, bloody good looking bike. Right. Yeah, that looked good. Yeah, it looked gorgeous. Um, but yeah, so it's I don't it's all to play for. And yeah, you could have some spicy wild cards. Like I fully expect to see Rueda at Valencia. Fully expect it because mm. as well as if Nep is out, for example, Rueda's yeah. on a KCM. Well, he will be year. out. He's already said he's out. So yeah, he's out. So you know they've got to replace him. So and probably... especially if Rueda goes and wins the rookies next week. Yeah, that's it. So you know Rueda could. Make a wild like, card he's or he's pretty much done with the Hondas now, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's won the title. He still has to win the rookies title. KTM is his future. So is it. the rookies they're at Valencia, aren't they? <laughs> so would he be able to do the rookies and Motor Three World Championship? I don't think he can. No, it's a week before, eh? I don't think they're the same weekend. Wait, nah. I doubt Maybe I doubt they do Chev, rookies as the... Maybe I'm thinking of Chev. I doubt they'll do... Yeah, because we've got Chev, Rebel Rookies. Valencia November the 5th and 6th so yeah it's the same weekend as the race weekend so Rue- we won't see Rueda then because he's got a rookie's title we can't see Rueda once he Otherwise, fire, I put him for the again win. he's fighting for it so who, who replaces Nepa that's probably going to be an Italian rider probably Lunetta yeah. or something Barrioli maybe well, or an MTA up? rider because they've got that Japanese kid haven't they um, they've got is that Giratouz is too young yeah um, but, but at the same time if it's an Italian I Barrioli's stepping up I expect to see him. Yeah. It's him yeah, or Lunetta. Exactly, yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. Well, no, because Farioli, both of them are the rookies. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Farioli is, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, that, that so, really doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> who's, who's left? Who's no, that? Like, could compete. Watch I'll Vicente not, Perez uh, end up on it. Oh, probably, to be honest. Let's be real. It probably will be Vicente Perez. Um, so, yeah, we could probably have like, because David Salvador could do it. Yeah, Carrara won because he's already there. Asman could do it. Alonso could do it. No, he could. Yeah, he could. Alonso could do it. Yeah, he's already made his debut, hasn't he? Adrian Caruso's could do it. That I would pay to see. Yeah, Caruso would be. Oh, he's like 15 now, isn't he? I, so, I would. I would. If I had money, I would promote Caruso myself. Caruso is fucking amazing, man. What he's no doing joke. on that Kuna de Cambio on his bike is. should be illegal. Like, you, you, yeah, don't, you don't win on a Kuna bike in Motor 3. No, well, Salvador did well on it a few years ago. Got second place overall. Um, but mm. yeah, like and that's yeah, even he's though someone's well. good. Like, but um, in Moto Two again, back to Moto Two. Great, Cambodia obviously did his penultimate Moto Two race. Got seventh. I'm sad that we could potentially never see him on a Moto Two. But we won't. It's, it's that simple. We won't watch him get a podium now. If, if that happens, <laughs> I will that. be thrilled. But I can't see it. It is a shame. It is a massive shame. Yeah, uh, like, look again. Look what happens when the pressure's off someone, and like the, yep. the performance ups. But in order to get that pressure off, he's had to leave. It's, it's a real bad catch twenty two for him. Yeah, it is. Um, right, let's move to MotoGP. So, uh, prediction time. Um, Bainaya took the victory. He's a beast. Mastinini second, Cotero third, and Martin on pole. So, mm, smash opposition, it. I went for Banaya, who crashed. Jacob went Marini, uh, Cameron went Bastianini, and Lauren completed the Italian set with Bazzetti. Mm. None of us got a pole position this week. 
<laughs> not one of us. I, I don't think in any, any class. I think the only realistic one, like in, if we are being totally honest, was Agura. Well, Agura, Fodgy, and Martin are all very viable. Fodger's not really a pole hound, though, is he? He'd be a four this year, hasn't he? Yeah. It's four, like, four. It's, you know, and this is his, I think, is his pole record this year. He's never really been a pole man. Yeah. No, he hasn't. But now he is. That's why he's kind of like. Yeah, no, he can't race. But, yeah. So, third place, I went for Jack Miller, who was like seventh. Jacob went Marquez. Ben Nair went for Cameron. Long way around, <laughs> I know. Uh, I know he went for Cameron. <laughs> Come on, a hell of a wow. race. Okay, good. It did. Well done, Cameron. Really, really good. Um, I'm fucking dying. Um, so one point for Cameron there, and then Laurent Marini, who suffered his first ever DNF. Well, it wasn't even his fault. No, very sad with that though. Um, second you know place, why? I went for oh, what? Why yeah, you... uh, front, front, um, front right, right yeah. device. So yeah, so I can't wait for them to fuck off. Second place, I went for Bangnaya so to Jacob. So we get a point each. Cameron went Marquez and Lauren went Miller. For the win, I went Marquez. Jacob went Bastianini. So Jacob gets a point. Cameron went Bastianini. He gets a point. And Lauren went to Spargro. I screwed I no points. so bloody close. Yeah. And they could easily have the gone the other way for me. That's biggest, 15 points yeah. to the bag. But that's the biggest like L ever. Yeah. It's a Lauren cruel. This is a fucking L. cruel oh mistress, God. this game, isn't it? <laughs> That's the worst one so far. I don't think I've scored zero before, unless I'm wrong. You're dropping yeah, donuts. No. Shit. So, oh, in the points, Cameron and Ryan scored two points each. No, Cameron didn't score. Ryan didn't score two points. That was Jacob. Fuck. Yeah. So, because the leaderboard's changed, um, I scored a point. So, the championship leader going into Valencia is myself with two, 321 points. Cameron second with 260, Jacob third with 186, Ryan fourth with 179, and Ryan Lauren, you cannot overtake Ryan now with 71. Uh, mathematically out. Yeah, you're Oh, if I just last. hadn't screwed up that podium, let's see. Yeah, you are last. Unlucky. I mean, it's uh, fair enough considering You did do we... like fucking six races. <laughs> what do we expect here? Well, that's no excuse. Yeah. Look at Alonso Lopez. Yeah, that's true. He's that's had true. much longer than me. It's, I mean, ridiculous. Yeah. Didn't they miss the same amount of races? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Laura missed like 30. Oh, okay, fair enough. I've been here since like Austria. No, okay, fair uh, fair I think fair even enough. after that. Aragon yeah. maybe. So the matter two stand-ins going into the final round is Augusto Fernandez in first. 9.5 seconds. Point, second point. <laughs> oh my God, I need to go to bed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I literally woke up five hours ago. Why am I this, like, good? Uh, Gura second with 9.5 points. I nearly said it again. Behind Canet third. Abolino fourth. Vietti fifth. Dixon sixth. Lopez seventh. Acosta eighth. Roberts ninth. And Chantra is still tenth. I don't know how the hell he's still How the tenth. fuck is Joe Roberts ninth? <laughs> Portugal. Yeah, Portugal and Mugello. That's, that's bonkers. Yeah, bonkers. Um, so... Yeah, in the MotoGP race. So, the Cassie team orders it seems to be the topic at the moment. Everyone's going a bit mental on social media. I genuinely do not think there was team orders. I genuinely no, think said, Bastianini could not beat Pecco yeah, today. He said he, was, he said he would have put the move on him if he'd been able. He just couldn't yeah. keep with him. Like the, the, yeah. the, the Ducati discussions on Pitbull was making me giggle mind. Oh, it's so funny. They're like see, walking in the pit yeah, lane. You could see the back. power struggle. Then Gigi just comes out of this final line. He's like, he's yeah. like the you know the the grandpa everybody listens to it. Gigi. Yeah, it's like it was really like. They were I like, think Gigi let him would, so would have let him race as well. Yeah, yeah, I think he would have to be honest. Um, but oh, yeah. bloody hell, if Bastianini had taken out Bangnaya, oh, and I, then the it Cotter was had the won the way. race. Like, I, I thought Pepe was going to take Bastianini out. Not like Fabio could would Fabio have won the championship then? No, he mm. would have gone to Valencia with a nine point advantage. Oh, mm. that would have been spicy. Yeah. But, oh, like, the, I the, forgot the he was fourteen. Issue. Don't yeah, 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 yeah. The, the yeah. big issue for Fabio though is that he could only do it in clear air on that Yamaha. And as soon as he broke Mark, he was gone. Yeah, but like, that gap literally stretched visibly. 
overlaps. Like Bez did so well, but I think that's what cut Bez was he had to try and yeah, make a bad round. Sure, his tires. Mark to finally them, yeah. did Peco, uh, did uh, Fabio the favor that Fabio was threatening to do that he he would do. But that's uh, we've known that from Fabio though. If you look at the mm. start of the season when he qualifies well and gets the clear air, he's a race winner. He's on the but podium. You of, know, of all the things I was so impressed with Peko's restart. Unreal. Yeah, and Fabio's. And both, Fabio's. Both, both, that. But, both. But, both of them. You know, if you're out breaking Mark Marquez into T1, you know you've done well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Well, that, the, I mean, break, he was, took a yeah. big, big risk and it paid off. It was a hell of a risk. He could have lost the front yeah, end. Yeah, easily could have lost that front end. But, he, he, you know, you, big risk comes big reward, isn't it? And yeah, that's, that's what won him that race. That's the thing. Everyone's like, the amount of comments I see of people like, oh, he doesn't deserve it. He doesn't, doesn't deserve championship because Dakakatia like helping him or, you know, it's like, no, like you Peko cannot... is going to win this championship because of moves like that, that and because he is yeah. willing to put it all on the line the, for the one thing overseas. Is, though, you cannot win a 20 round world championship by luck. You can win a race by luck, but not a championship. Yeah, and he has been by far the most superior rider on that grid yeah. The fact that he has obviously come back from 91 points back to lead by 23, mm. that, that's 114 a point swing, swing is mm. insane. Yeah, um, he's made some bloody questionable decisions this year. But yeah, on yeah. track, <laughs> purely on track, he has been the class act in the field. He is by far deservedly world champion, but people just cannot cannot accept it I don't see why like, people are so salty about Ducati team orders either just you know, it's gonna happen like Ducati have made their bed by providing eight bikes you know like if they are willing to do it they should reap the rewards and be able to set team orders up and they're gonna like they'd be stupid not to I think people just don't want to see team orders in a individual sport I mean, Jack even said it himself, I think, at one point during the weekend. Mm. Like, he will help peck a wife, but at the end of the day, it is an individual sport. Mm. But, like, they, you can't, you can easily get, whether you listen to it, mm. is a different story entirely. But you, you can't be surprised if Ducati give team orders because they've helped themselves be in this fantastic position by being willing to provide eight bikes. Should, yeah, they, and the thing is, Sorry, Karen, I was Karen. just going to say they should have just cleared it up earlier what exactly the team orders were because we're only really finding out last week and this week really what it, it is is don't make Mapping a move <laughs> don't make a move unless you can go for the win don't make a stupid move yeah. on any Ducati Tardotti said it after the race today on BT Sport and it's basically don't make a silly move on a Ducati an, an other Ducati unless you can go for the race win if they'd said that a couple of weeks ago you'd be like alright makes sense whereas everyone in their heads thought that they were telling that they had to like bubble wrap protect Peko at all costs well they probably do like well, in the, like, they might I, I, the underlying thing even if they don't say it is look after Peko he is the number one but that's and obvious he, yeah of course yeah like, but, but then people are surprised when it happens like you can't have it both ways the thing with Ducati is right. I don't. If even if they went and employed team, whatever it's called, team what team orders. That's it. Team oh. orders. My <laughs> like, brain is fried. Yeah. Like even if Ducati went and employed ah. team orders, I wouldn't blame them what? because they haven't won a MotoGP World Championship in fifteen years since Stoner. Mm. By now, it is now the most successful Ducati rider and the only Ducati rider to win seven races in the season since Stoner. They have invested mm. mi- hundreds of millions of euros into MotoGP. Their budget is 40 million every year. So if you do the maths, 40 times 15 is well over a billion euros into MotoGP. Yeah, they're lucky um, how do you, how do you own them, they? Yeah. So if you invest over a billion euros into a project and you have a chance to win a championship, championship you are going to do everything in your everything physically possible to make sure that you win that championship no matter what. And if yeah. you can employ eight bikes onto a grid to do that and you're going to protect your lead rider who will win you that championship, do it. Yeah, 100%. I, I see it. I've never seen the issue with team orders personally because you, at the end of the day, you have to look after your squad. But and I think if, my... if you feel that a number two rider needs to move over for your number one rider, 
then that's your decision. You're the one making the you're the one paying the bills. You're the one who should be making the calls from the outside. Yeah, I th- I think now in this year especially the. Fabio was seen as an underdog, even though he was the world champion last year. The bike was so clearly a lot worse. And I think people like that underdog story. So I mm. think if everything was heightened in that of, oh, Peck was getting help and the stuff he did outside of the track and everyone was hoping that the underdog would, would come out on top then, which was mm. very rarely going to happen. Because of how much that Ducati have put into it. So I think Peko got a lot of scrutiny because people wanted to see the likes of Fabio or Alish winning it because everyone loves an underdog story. They yeah. prefer it over someone just going out. I can tell you what's nuts, though. The only Ducati who didn't get a pole is Luca Marini so far. Like, yep. not going to happen. Who would, who would have thought that? No, even DJ got a pull. Like, I don't think that's the, that's surprising them. I do. Like pole position is one thing. Like the especially against eight other Ducatis, I think that is a super surprising that Marini's the only one who doesn't hasn't got it. Considering he's qualifying form. Even if you put the just the eight of them in a qualifying session, I I still wouldn't put Marini. I'd put him mm. for the a win out of the eight of them, but I wouldn't put him on pole out of I, I just I can't believe like but, but I think that shows that Ducati deserve to win the manufacturer's title the team's title and the individual title because not only have they provided eight bikes they provided eight excellent bikes yeah it's not like they're putting shit boxes like Honda are they? mm. yeah. no, they're like, putting top bike yeah like they, they put in race winning bikes on that grid for everyone who's prepared to pay for it like you, yeah, you can't and- really argue with that and if they're prepared to provide it, why shouldn't you take advantage? Yeah, like at the end of the day, it's you get you get out what you put in. Mm. Yamaha aren't I uh, haven't been listening to their riders for years. You know, it's one of the reasons Vinales so publicly left and Rossi kind of had issues and they even Fabio at the start of the year said Yamaha didn't listen to him and it's just why he's got a slower bike. Mm. You know, and because Ducati haven't put what they want to get out of it into it. Ducati want to win this championship. There's no wonder why they've employed Tardotti, Gigi, and um, Chibati. You know, like the three dons of Ducati, the guys that, <laughs> you know, they're paid the big bucks to get this shit done. If they and don't every win year, this title now, one of those is on the chopping block. They have to provide oh, yeah. team orders. I'd get rid of all of them. I'd be like, I've had enough oh, yeah. now. You're gone. Yeah, I'd be sick of it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Think, and that's the thing, right? They have put, and you see every year since 2013 when Ducati was a shit box, Every year, they have made a giant step forward. Every single year, with Dovi, he did well. Dovi just could not beat Mark, but no one could beat Mark when he was like no. an alien. You Fabio know, with the Dovi. Beat Mark now. Fabio wouldn't beat Mark 2019, Mark now. It's no, just... exactly. And so... that was Dovi's problem. Dovi would probably have won this title. Like 2017, 2018, Dovi would probably win this title. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. And But the Catty, every year, they make a gigantic step forward. They are always at the forefront of development. They are the gut. They are the manufacturer that everybody copies from. They put something out and everybody else has it on their bike next week. Mm-hmm. They are by far the the guys who really do put everything they've got into winning this title. And so there's no surprise that they're going to win the championship they because it. they put out what they get into it. It's, they do, that, they that fully is deserve the, that it. That is the three words. They deserve it. Yeah, 100%. And I don't like that people are trying to like take it away from Pecco and Ducati by saying, oh, you know... Team orders this, uh, you're cheating. You're, if I don't it's... honestly though, like if it came down to it, right? And Morbidelli gave Quartararo the win in Valencia if Peco DNF'd, I don't think anybody would complain about team orders then. No, they probably would to be fair. Because <laughs> that's the <laughs> underdog story. I'm telling yeah. you, people love it. Yeah, the fact right. that Ducati are at the forefront is what people have an issue with. It was the exact same when Mark Marquez was dominating. People just don't like the domination than being at the front. It Max Verstappen and Formula One, they don't like it. They like seeing the people come yeah. up from below. People don't like yeah. success. Yeah. People it's why people supported Dolby so much when he was battling with yeah. Marquez. You know, the the fans and like the grandstands filled up with Dolby flags because people wanted the other guy to win. 
But then All if Dobby the had gone and won three titles in a row, people would be supporting Marquez. And then everybody back to Marquez, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's always a way. Humans it's why, are like, just top... dicks. It's that simple. It's... And it's why, and same with Top Rack in uh, World Superbikes. Yeah. Like, obviously, Top Rack is a very likable character, and I fucking love the guy. But again, he dethroned a six time world champion, the greatest superbike rider chaos. ever. Yeah. And he absolutely destroyed him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he, like, Top Rack, he just makes me fucking laugh. Like, the f- video of him the other day riding the bike backwards. Yeah. And, yeah. But, th- but like, that is the thing. My dad is the biggest Jonathan Ray fan. And I came down the stairs today to see him cheering for Top Rack because Batista was winning. And he just go. wants, you know. he, he was like, this, I want Top Rack to win now. I, I think Top yeah. Rack's great. And that's all it is, is that, yeah, people like I seeing the other guy win. I just think it's stupid, to be honest, because you shouldn't be hated for being better. Because you've applied yourself, you know what I mean. You don't people get better. People hate by, success. Yeah, suffering people from hate success. success. <laughs> I, yeah, I hate. I hate that part of it that people get hate for it. But I do understand people cheering for the the other guy. Yeah, oh, yeah I, like I, I understand always. it. Like because it's yeah. a great story in it. But you yeah. also shouldn't be disliked. For yeah, you shouldn't hate better. on the other person just because yeah. of that. Yeah. You should just like yeah. both, but like the other guy a little bit more. Who's like yeah. the underdog. Yeah, because like Ray gets a lot of hate. People was like, "Oh, what's the bike's boring?" Blah blah blah, because he was winning races. Yeah, and and he, like, you know, he should not be criticised for making it boring because he was so bloody good for six years. For six people, years to dominate is a long time. But people even complain now, being like, "Oh, see, look, now he's got competition. He's terrible. He win. never would have won those six championships if they'd been there at the time." Like people just like to complain for the sake of he complaining. He beat Bautista straight up. He beat Top Rack straight yeah. up. I mean, he's beaten them both before. Yeah, yeah. Yes. exactly. So, yeah, it is. It's. I think go back onto Ducati and like because they're going to win a world of bikes. I think as well. Yeah. Well, they are. Yeah. I mean, come on, it's going to well, again. The, anything can happen in bikes. You can't say for sure that. I that's, don't know. Four that's races to go it. and a sixty, seventy yeah. point oh, lead. Wait, wait, this is why we love no. bikes, though, because it's just so unpredictable. Literally anything. Can Not happen. in world superbikes. So I think it's pretty <laughs> predictable. You know what's going to happen. Yeah, it, it's very likely, but nothing is impossible in bikes. Like it's not like F one. You know, like an off day for a Red Bull is fourth. An off day for Bautista could be twelfth. It's yeah, I love yeah, it. Yeah, but he's got the lead noise. I I think. Yeah, I, I can't see him over. giving it up. But yeah. you just never know. You can't say for sure anything about a GP. Like you can't even say for sure someone's going to be riding for you in Moto GP. Well, you can't even say that Pekka will start the Valencia Grand Prix because yeah. he could he could, he could fall down the stairs and break again. his leg. Yeah. Well, he yeah. could fall down the stairs, yeah. break his leg, or he yeah. could open a window and snap his arm in half. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Window. You know, it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 across shape window, yeah. Riding a bike, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, it's like if if Ducati have got any sense happen. now, they will put him in a in a box, solitary yeah, confinement yeah. for two yeah, weeks. Yeah, two put him in a box and just like slot food yeah, through the a thing gap. Is, like he could go out in FP one and break his leg. Yeah, look at race. like look at Zonta in, in F one uh, in PI. Yeah, <laughs> fucking first corner. <laughs> yeah, literally. First, second corner of FP1. That's what happened to Sam Lowe's though, and now he's out yeah. for the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. literally, yeah, yeah. you know, it, it could happen. Like, it's, it's, it's not out happen. of the realms. But, yeah, so, but I don't, I can't see ba- um, Bautista losing to but now. No. But it's what you, what you get out is what you put in. Wrong mm. way around. What you put in is what you get out. But, um, Going on to some, some other top rides today. Marco Bezzecchi in fourth. Again, he's a rookie. Absolutely outstanding. Super impressive. Super. What's he going to do next year on a 22? He's going to be good. I can't wait for that. Um, a guy who I haven't seen anybody praise is Johan Zarco. He finished ninth from 18th today on the grid. He, yeah, someone of Zarco's caliber shouldn't be starting 18th. I, I didn't realise he'd started so low, which is why I wasn't yeah. thinking like the, about it. The last yeah. issue is he shouldn't be starting there. Darren Binder no. did well. Yeah. Until he got he, he, murked. Yeah, until he <laughs> yeah. does what he normally does. No, um, DG took him out. Yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it wasn't the other way around. He was an innocent party in this. Oh, Go I'm on. sorry. Sorry, Darren. Sorry. Um, and obviously, Raul Fernandez, the birthday boy, got a point. But none of us have mentioned the reason why Jorge Martin didn't get that Ducati seat. 
Because he's worse than a Mayor Bastianini? This... Because he's just inconsistent. (laughs) Someone said... Do you know, I think it was Jorge Martin's interview himself about how annoyed he was and he felt like they... Someone had obviously told him he was getting that seat and he clearly wasn't. I don't understand at what point in his career he really thought he was getting that seat. In this season. In this season. Honestly, when he was talking about it, saying that he... Fully blindsided. He felt blindsided, is yeah. what he said. Like he, yeah. he says, he fully deserves it more than Bastianini. No, and I'm thinking, wait, no way. At, 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 on what metric? Yeah, literally, morally, like, like not yeah, even morally, mor- because mor- in, <laughs> yeah, not even morally, <laughs> really, right? Either. Because Ineas probably a, a you know he's a he's a gooder boy. <laughs> yeah, but like Jorge Martin had. Probably his best chance to win a race all year long today, and he just chucked it at the wall. Like, and that's I, that's why Bastianini got the seat because he was able to live with the pace. But even Whereas when Martin the pressure's wasn't. pressure off, you know you're getting your seat next year. Okay, it's not the one you wanted, but there's no pressure on you now. You just got to finish the rest of the season, reset for next year. You mm. know, we've seen it with other riders; it makes them excel. But for some reason. I mean, he's back on getting pole positions and stuff like that, but... That was unbelievable. Yeah. Like, what, like, what yeah. he did. That, like, holy shit. Yeah, it was like playing MotoGP game. Where, you know, yeah. That, that's, the kind but, of, that's the kind of shit you do on, on you know, 0% AI. On a game, yeah, yeah. Mm. But it, the fact that he's crashing at P1, like, he crashed so much earlier this year and then he had his operation that, you know, he said, oh, I need this because he yeah, has, has issues with the nerves and his hand means he loses feeling. But because of his Portimao crash last year, but I'm like, right, I'm not saying that he, that wasn't the reason, but was it an excuse? Because he had come back factor. after the operation and he's still... I think he's, <laughs> I think he's, I think his confidence got dented more than, I think he's pulled an Ian Oney almost. I think he's heartbroken like, that Ducati didn't choose him. Yeah. And he had such a spectacular rookie year that he is trying so hard to try and hit that level again and just can't. I think that's what's ruined him though. The the yeah. the high that I he was on been. in his rookie season, even with the crash and having to miss rounds, he came into this season, I think, thinking that he was in a chance with the title. He I think he mm. thought he had the like everything in that. That Ducati seat was his until yeah. Anea Bastianini appeared. Like that <laughs> fully was his. So why would like, Anea Bastianini appear? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, Martin used literally, the tack. It wasn't very effective. Like, we say it's a joke, but genuinely, Martin is suffering from his success last year. Yeah, yeah I would have liked to have seen him those on a 21. Lights. Yeah, because he said something the other week about the new bike being not as and don't forget, friendly for him the, as last the year. The red bikes are a 22.5. Yeah. Whereas yeah, the brown bikes bike. are on a 22. Like, it's a different engine spec. Yeah, and obviously Marine's Which on 22 didn't as well. Like, yeah. Mm. Well, you know, it's a. We'd be expecting yeah. Pedro to have that slight advantage, but I think, I think his confidence has just gone through the floor. It's not for lack of talent, yeah. like at all. Well, he's a bloody good rider. He's but... unbelievable, but it's it's his head. Mm. What's I don't, the issue? I don't think he's ever going to get it back either, because I think what Ducati have just done has basically killed him off. For want of better term. Yeah, seeing how salty he is about it. I would, like, I would wholeheartedly what, I, agree. You cannot, like, you can't argue. You can't even make the right call. He's only got a one-year contract, so that's interesting. Could we see him on the move after next year? I well, think yes. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say I, I think he deliberately would not have signed a two-year contract yeah. because, you yeah, know, like, because of the move Bastianini got. And um, but and he has earned it. He's deserved it more. Yeah, he fully deserves, and I think he will now sabotage himself and his career by trying to prove Ducati wrong and prove they chose yeah. to sign the wrong guy and try and get this vengeance on Ducati instead of going, you know what? I fucked up this year. Not as good as year as last year, but we build, we move. And they was a better guy. But I get it as well in the fact that these guys are competitive. Like, of course, it's in their frigging nature to be competitive, yeah. but it's you kind of have to accept that... You can't win everything. You, yeah, you kind of have to accept that you weren't the best guy this year, man, and that's 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 okay. And, and to be honest, you've got even, a job next year. Even if he was told, "Oh, you're getting that seat," and then he didn't get it, it's like, okay, you can't win them all. You know, you like, just have to open your eyes. It's, it's not like he's out of a job. I think he. 
I understand. I feel like anyone would have felt exactly the same as what he did in that situation. But the issue is, is that everyone else would have opened their eyes and gone, okay, I understand now. And been able to realize why they didn't get the seat. Whereas he's still in this thought he's process. He's so laser focused on it. Yeah, that yeah. He, he's still in the mindset fun, that he should have got it. And that's where it's going wrong for him. Like, And also, I think it is worth pointing out as well that Zarko's kept his seat at Brahma because of the development side. Yeah. Like, yeah. Zarko all year has been not starting with the front hole shot device because they're being banned next year. And he's suffering for it. You know, he, he's, he has earned his contract with Ducati in a different way. And, I th- and like, based on what we're seeing now, I think Ducati values Zarko more than Martin. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they fully do. I just played a photo of Batista's toe sticking at the end of his boot. Let's see. From the race today. Do you think they'll get rid of both Sarko and ba- um, Martin after 2023, though? Because just yes. after thinking about it there, I think they'll completely shake up Prama. Yeah. Well, they've got, they'll, if you look down to Moto 2, because Ducati will always be looking for the next Tony Arbolino. guy. Tony Arbolino. You've got obviously Vietti, if he can actually pull it together. You've got Alonso Lopez. Pedro Costa, who won't want to be riding on KTM in 2024, even oh, though he's contemplating. Yeah, he won't be. He won't be. Because KTM have got through weird development cycles. And by the time Acosta goes up, it could no, be he's a going great to bike again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honestly, there is no way we're seeing Pedro on an RC16. No, no way. I, but if, the, if it suddenly turns out to be a brilliant bike in 2023, and continues on into 2024 because again nothing's final in MotoGP it could happen no. especially with yeah, the money KTM can bring Pedro Costa is smarter than that he's already seen what they've done to Remy and, mm. and he's gone he's smarter than that yeah um, one thing I wanted to point out as well kind of a sad stat um, since her ref this year Joan Mir has only scored points twice since her he was out for he was out. He did miss, for I think, three two races. or three rounds. Yeah, a few races. But he is only score, which, you know, we talk about guys having bad years. That is a horrendous year. And so I'm hoping next year he can, um, it, with the Honda, that's he can gonna kind be of... the super interesting thing of the Valencia test to see how yeah. he gets on oh, that yeah, Honda. Cause they'll be riding them on their yeah. shit. I forgot. Because well, he's going to be on the Honda. And... The, yeah, him and Rins will both be on their Hondas at the Valencia test. Yeah, of course, and and Miller with the KTM. Super interesting. Yeah, yeah and Raul Miguel will um, be KTM and Nolay and Miguel go, apparently. Uh, no, no I, I read that they are. Oh, they are, no, <gasps> they? Well, apparently not. Like, they learn Raul go, but apparently not Miguel until January the 1st. It's because they don't no, care I about read... Raul. No, yeah, Miguel can ride. Oh, the awesome. seen it. I, I'm good. Yeah, I'm they, glad. they can test it. Because I thought yeah, that yeah. was a really shit idea, especially if they get him Miller. I yeah, that was super yeah. Unfair, yeah. But... Surely they want Miller to to test mm. it. Yeah, yeah. KTM statement says that they will. They oh, will good. let him ride it. Glad. Seen it. But yeah, like um, because it's going to be a really interesting comparison because that Honda does turn. It's the rear end that's the problem. So if it's yeah. if it's got front end positivity like the Suzuki, yeah, he could yeah. excel. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can't wait for that Valencia test. I just remembered like pull back on the KTM. Oh, mate, it's going to be so good. And Alex mm-hmm. Marcus on the Ducati. I'd yeah, forgotten that's... about Ooh. that completely. That and had slipped Bashini my mind. Bashini on the factory Ducati. In red. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, they'll not be in red yet, but I was just going to say it'll look yeah, good. I've, I've, already, booked, no, I've will... already booked Tuesday. Well, not, <laughs> not all be <laughs> in black. And they would be in. And they, no, and they, and they would get the uh, factory. Yeah, he's going to get the. Like, he's like, going to get the. What Pirro's tested is, is what's going to Valencia, basically. They do. What Pirro tested at Jerez is going to be. And they, and they will be wearing red at Valencia test. Hmm. Just like when um, Iannone did, because he's, he's the Petrucci. room with Ducati. Yeah, and Petrucci as well. I know a lot of them run Anea, like different like winter liveries and like yeah, testing do, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know whether or not Ducati will get them yeah. in the full. No, because it's a Ducati contract. Ducati will put them in red. Yeah, they will put him in. They'll, they'll and they put will the be in red on it. the Valencia test. Yeah, oh, <laughs> which exciting. is going to look sick. Oh, that's going to look unreal. Mm. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's, I just got it's, really excited for that. Yeah, it's a season renewal, and it? it's just. But my point is that both Rins and Mia will mm. both be on that's the Honda. That's going to be so the interesting. Yeah. And by all accounts, the front end of the Honda is a good front end. 
it's the rear it's, they it, need it's to work had, on. It's improved, but yeah, yeah, it's the rear because so, it was the front end that was yeah. an issue. So if they can make that even somewhat close to the Suzuki, it's never going to be as agile as the Suzuki was. It's just not like. But if they can get it somewhere close, which I see no reason not, because they both developed that bike into a race winning machine. Yeah, it's going to be going to be a. I hope the two of them can make it work at home. Of course, they could end up pulling yeah, it. Ideas, you know what I mean? Out of anyone, yeah, I, I, I hope the two of them are the ones that it. make it work. I think yeah. Rins will beat Mia next year. Rins will do well. I genuinely think Rins will do well. Mia um, is the better rider, but I think next year Rins will beat him. And then come 2024, maybe 2025, Mia will be in the title mix. With I Pedro Costa oh. as his teammate. Yeah, with Pedro, Pedro the Pedo, let's go. Um, right, all so <laughs> all Mark with his bionic arm at that point, it'll just be full metal. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Um, right, so, so before we end this podcast, the um, championship standings for MotoGP by Nayat leads Quattararo by twenty three points going to the final round. A Spargo third out of the championship now, but a point ahead of Bastianini for third in the championship. Um, big money for whoever gets third. So both of them will be pushing out. I do think Bastianini will get third in the championship. Ooh, unfortunately, I don't know about that because I I can see it pretty being super strong in their nice little red livery at Valencia. Oh yeah, it'll be red, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> it'll be it'll be a red bike. Yeah, <laughs> I've got <about> that. <laughs> yeah they, they, historically they've been strong now with a race winning bike. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, Miller fifth, Binder sixth. Big Binder's now got an extra B because he's now bald. That shocked me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I, was I was not like, expecting that. It's a pro aerodynamics, isn't it? Um Zarko seventh, Rins eighth, Olivera ninth, and Jorge Martin in tenth. And that's why Jorge Martin did not get the factory Ducati seat. Yep. Oh actually, do you know what I'm just thinking? Frankie Morbidelli took his two long laps. Did he not finish in like eleventh? Hmm? Um yeah. But obviously he had the penalty well, as well. And then he had a penalty at the end of the race to demote him even further. Um, yeah, he was like he finished, tenth. He crossed finished the line. Finished and then... Tenth. Yeah, he, finished, he crossed the line like 10th, yeah. What, and then three Which seconds? Is fucking good. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that so needs mentioned. What happened? He's what an idiot. Found? No, like, what's he found? Oh, like, <laughs> like he keeps PI doing stupid and stuff. He found out that... He's gone. Basically, it's a twist the throttle, twist the throttle a bit earlier and break well, a bit the, later. Well, and apparently, then can, that was the yeah. issue was that he was on the throttle too early. He was trying to smooth it when you need to stand it up and gun it on the Yamaha. Yeah, because the, the Yamaha is... Because he switched from the 2019 to the 2021 Yamaha, mm. which the 2019 was a lot smooth. That's obviously the one that Fabio rode as a rookie. It was a lot more rider-friendly. That was the Jorge Lorenzo package. Yeah, the 2019 one was a much... No, 2021 bike, is a, you need to ride it a lot more aggressively and not more... Point and square, like a lot not more, speed. yeah. Point and square, and so, like you just said, and then to back that up, or Mubadeli probably just needed to learn how to be a bit more aggressive with it. Really, yeah. I think he might be making V shapes in corners now instead of U shapes. He's taken the aggressiveness yeah. just a step too far, but <laughs> yeah, just he would always dial it back, I guess. But he's he's on the right, he's on the right track anyway, which is on the right exciting path. for yeah. next year. Hopefully, he can finally because we know Franco Mubadeli is a race winning. Writer. Yeah, he's incredible. Yeah, like he's his talented. Talent will allow it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, Who's our writer Loris of the Baz. day? Hold on, I've just seen... I will do it as a sec, yeah. Uh, Loris Baz has got a thousand euro fine for his little middle finger today as well. Oh my God, it was so um, funny. Did you watch it in the replay on slow mo and all? He's sitting there and they showed oh, yeah. it for like 10 seconds on the TV. It was hilarious. He was mad. And the thing is, right, he said, he's posted on Twitter, it all scrumbled up and he said, Race direction is much faster to give a 1,000 euro penalty for a middle finger than to explain their own mistake like last, yesterday and last week in Australia. With obviously <laughs> Laura, with Mercado and uh, Navarro. Ooh. Yes, Lawrence. <laughs> Here's another 1,000 pound fine just for that tweet. Yeah. Literally. Oh my God. Fair play to him. Um, right. So riders of a day. Moto3, please, for you lot. It's hard to look past McPhee, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm going to put McPhee for sure. I always like to try and pick someone who wasn't like the clear the winner. The winner. Yeah. yeah. 
Like the thing is, Mc, McPhee I did genuinely so well, didn't cannot he? think of anyone else. It would have been Ricardo Rossi had he not have crashed. Yeah, same but with Pereira for me. Yeah, I ha- I have to yeah, go with John McPhee, McPhee though. Yeah, just yeah, has to be. Pint. He did so good. Uh, right, Moto two, please. Philip Salach. Mm, Salach did well in eleven. He was injured from yeah, his qualifying crash, and yeah, he, he still. Did good dragged himself through that field to come home just outside the top 10. I was super, super impressed with him. Good. Um, I'm going to go for Manuel Gonzalez. Came from Supersport last year. So completely different tyres, different chassis. Never been to Sepang before and he battled for the first, mm. p- for the per- podium for the first time in Moto2 in a brand new team as well. So for me, Manuel Gonzalez is a clear ride of the day for me in Moto2. Um, I'm going to go with Tony Arbolino. He was excellent. Yeah. Italian was also really good. Came into Kubo. Where did he finish? 14th? 16th, I want to say. I don't know the results right. up anymore. Like, considering he was. Did it well. Yeah, like both of them like have come on leaps and bounds having consistent World Championship rides. It just yeah, goes to show well. going into the World Championship, you might sink at some point, but you can swim. That's it. Right. And um, Motor GP, please. See, now this is a tough one. Was Peko was, this is difficult. Fabio. Peko was flawless. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Lauren with Fabio. Fabio. Because Peko look what happens well. when the pressure is taken off. That was the reason why he's the world champion. Fabio's gone from being the from chase E yeah. to the chaser. But Peko now, and that's did when not he... put one foot wrong. Oh, he was incredible. But we've like, yeah, seen this so from good. Peko and it's exactly what you need to do to win a championship. Great, keep it coming. Love it from Peko. Show everyone wrong. Show that you don't crumble under the pressure. I mean, I'm the first to slate Peko off when he does something wrong. I don't get me wrong. He had an unbelievable ride, but I think from Fabio to come back after losing the championship basically last week in Phillip Island to pull out a performance like that when you've been crashing, finishing like tenth. Not to take away from Peko. If it, if it wasn't going to be Fabio, it would be Peko, hundred percent. Mm, that's a yeah. very tough call for me because Peko and Fabio impressed me equally but in different ways. Yeah. Because Peko could easily have made a pressure mistake. Yeah. And he didn't. I Fabio agree. could easily have finished seventh or eighth. But he didn't. I agree made the pressure mistake that I thought Peko Bangaya was going to make. Mm. I fully thought Peko was going to crash out of that race. Yeah. Fully, fully thought it. So hands up to him. Like he was unbelievable. Yeah, Absolutely no, unbelievable. I, was, I think I'm going to have to go Peko just because he. It's so difficult to ride 20 plus laps flawlessly. You know what I mean? Like, let alone. On the start with, alone, in fairness, yeah, <laughs> would yeah, be enough. Let alone with Inea Bastianini breathing down your neck the entire time. We'll see that podium and a lot with, next year. Yeah, but the yeah. other way around. I for, me, for me, Pekka is the fourth favourite next year. So, mm. maybe even fifth. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. I know we'll wrap it up there uh, under two hours. Um, yeah. But hope you enjoyed this podcast. We'll be back next weekend with more shit. Uh, so, yeah. I hope you enjoyed and we'll be back next time. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao, motherfucker. Bye.